I was 31 when I first started trying, 34 when I first conceived, and then I was 36 when I started trying again. You know, I think for me the hardest part of the experience was um, not knowing why. There was absolutely nothing wrong with my body. Um, I didn't have blocked tubes. I didn't have endometriosis. I didn't have any of the markers that would say, okay, well, we can fix this and then you'll be able to get pregnant. I have what was called unexplained infertility. And I didn't know that I was one of seven couples um, having difficulty. I just thought there's something wrong with me. And I was not happy about it. And when you don't have something that you can do about it, like I can fix this, you just start to lose your confidence and you start to lose your sense of I'm okay. And that level of stress and depression starts a downward cycle that actually um, I started to recognize as this is actually defeating my ability to relax and hopefully conceive naturally. Um, and that's really when, when I started using yoga to address the balance and the imbalances in my body and try to take some power back. It was a difficult journey, but I started to go, okay, I'm not alone in this. How can I use yoga, this thing that I do? I'm a teacher, I'm a practitioner. How can I use this to actually not only heal myself, but help other women who are going through this? Because I can't be alone. And as soon as I started opening that door, women came flooding in. It's amazing to me how many women are out there silently suffering. It was important to me to try to give my son um, a sibling. And I wanted to exhaust every possible option that I had available to me to do that. And at the same time, when I did give up, it was for the right reasons. It was because I had finally decided that my, my second child was actually gonna be my strong yoga for fertility work, was helping other women. That my mess would become my message and my ability to take what I had learned from my own emotional roller coaster and teach other women how to navigate was my second child. The thing that, that I always tell my students is if you truly want to be a parent, you will be. How you become that parent is the journey. And so to exhaust all of the physical options first, find out what your reproductive health, health is, find out what your partner's reproductive health is. Get a baseline and then from there you can start to make choices. For me, I guess my options got narrower and narrower as time went by and I think that's why I want to get the word out. That's why I want to tell other women, don't wait. Find out now. Find out in your 20s what, what your reproductive health is. Find out before you've even found the perfect guy because um, you only have a window and that window closes uh, with time and with misinformation. And you'll have more choices if, if you know more sooner. My goal actually as the spokesperson for the American Fertility Association is to normalize the conversation. It shouldn't be in the closet. It shouldn't be a subject for shame or feeling like there's something wrong with you. It really needs to be talked about. So conversation actually is only going to make it less pervasive. So if anything, I would just say talk. Talk to your friends, talk to your professionals, talk to the support system. Find out what you can do to make a difference. Click on the link below for more personal stories about the truth about trying.